I've done a ton of tests for making PCBs for super rapid prototyping. Lasers, acid, milling, you name it. But there's always been one thing I haven't been able to figure out. Vias. Vias are super difficult and time consuming to make yourself. With a bunch of acid baths, electroplating, and chemicals. You can also get these little rivets, but they're kind of big, you can't put them under large ICs, and they're super manual to install. But what if the via was already there? What if you had a board, a template PCB with a standard array of vias already baked into it, and when you cut out your traces on the front and back side, you're just deciding what those vias get used for? The board shop is already great at making vias, so why reinvent the wheel? Well, I'm here to report, it works. This is Viagrid, a standardized PCB blank used for insanely rapid prototyping. Think of them like the solderless breadboard for SMT. And it's super simple to use. You start by designing your schematic just like you normally would for any board, but then you drop it into a Viagrid template PCB instead of starting from scratch. The template just shows you where you can drop your vias, but aside from that, you just lay out and route your board like you normally would. Then you export it and load it up into Lightburn, etch the front side, etch the back side, and in under an hour, you have a fully functional PCB, double-sided, factory vias, ready for population. Coupled with a Lumen PMP, a paste extruder, and a reflow oven, the entire process from design to finished double-sided board can be under 90 minutes. I am so excited about this. I think this is such a cool technique and such a fascinating way to be able to just make any design you want in a little over an hour. That's wild. So how does this even happen? In my last video I made about etching PCBs with lasers, we had to use FR1 as a substrate instead of FR4 because the fiber laser will actually make FR4 conductive when it cuts, which is obviously not good. <laughs> but the laser I'm using here is what's called a DPSS laser or a diode pumped solid state laser that uses UV light and it doesn't really burn anything. I'm using the Omni 1 from Commarker. This isn't sponsored, I bought this retail. But these types of lasers are now new on the market and at like a reasonable price point. The one I have isn't enclosed, but Commarker just just announced that they have a new version which is fully enclosed with ventilation and interlocks and all the good stuff. It is a little pricey, however. But if you're an engineering company and being able to iterate on a PCB design every 90 minutes is important to you, it's so worth it, it's not even funny. If you don't mind waiting a week for new boards to arrive, then the board shop's probably for you. When I heard about this new type of laser, actually when I was at Open Source a few months ago, I discovered that there were some that were commercially available and I pulled the trigger on one immediately and started playing around with it. It took a lot of tuning to figure out the appropriate settings to to do this process. I tried doing the standard settings array that Lightburn and pretty much every laser cutter will have you do to find the correct settings for what you wanna do, but it became very clear to me that I needed to dive a little deeper than just doing a standard array of settings. <laughs> I did a lot of research, asked a bunch of laser people, and got some good answers and finally got stuff working, including a whole arc where I had to loosen the head of the laser to get it perfectly aligned, but I now have an excellent set of settings that beautifully engraves these PCBs without blasting through the FR4 underneath. Once I got the settings tuned well, I made a Lightburn project that has all the settings baked into it and also a bunch of alignment features already loaded in. And it makes it really easy to just drop in a new design and cut. An interesting problem to solve with this process was getting the board aligned to the laser. This isn't quite like just cutting on a blank piece of PCB. We have to align it with the vias so that everything works correctly. At first I tried adjusting it in light burn like a 10th of a degree at a time and a hundred microns at a time, but that stunk. <laughs> However, Lightburn has a feature called Frame, where it will just outline what you want to cut in a very low power. I noticed that the laser was almost invisible when it hit the ENIG plating on the PCB, but it lit up brilliantly when it hit the FR4 PCB substrate. I designed Viagrid to have these little Pac-Man features in the corner with a very slim path of exposed fiberglass in between them. When you have Lightburn frame the main copper area, you know you're perfectly aligned and scaled when it perfectly lights up all four of those corner brackets. Getting that board to that position is a different challenge. What I settled on is a jig that has two plates. The bottom plate bolts onto the laser base, and the top plate holds the PCB with three dowel pins and two spring-loaded cams, so it re-indexes really consistently. The top plate attaches to the bottom with four thumb screws, and there's a ton of play with it when they're loose, so all you have to do is shift the top plate until all four corners line up, and then you tighten it down. It's so much easier to do than futzing around with the software, and it's actually even kind of fun to get it perfectly aligned. What's really cool about this method, too, is you're now done with calibration and alignment. You can take boards in and out, even the same job and recut over and over again. And as long as you don't mess with your alignment features in light burn, you're finished. Everything's lined up and you can cut consistently every time. The other interesting problem to solve here was the via arrangement and layout on the board. I started with a bunch of very tiny clusters of vias all around the board and a couple little pockets in the main area, like just kind of strewn throughout the center. This ended up being way more vias than what I think is like 
even really needed or possible for a board this size. And the clusters were really densely packed, which made alignment way more difficult. So I ended up spacing them out quite a bit so that it's much easier to get it aligned and make sure a board that we cut, even if it's not perfectly aligned, is still going to have all the vias connect to where they're supposed to go. It's much more forgiving and increasing the space of it did not adversely affect my ability to use it at all so far. I've also been considering what a four layer board could look like with this method. Of course, you can't etch the inner two layers, so they'd have to be their own two dedicated nets, most likely power or ground or two ground planes. Some of the exposed vias would connect to inner layer one, the other ones would connect to inner layer two. This could be a really handy way to get power and ground distributed nice and evenly across the board at the expense of having to isolate every single via that connects to these layers that you don't end up using. It will add some etching time, but it's not much for what it gets you. This is something I haven't done yet, but I really want to play around with. I've actually been using via grid actively for the last week or so, and let me tell you, it has changed the game for how I operate. We have this really old jig we use to program the slots on feeder rails for the Loom PMP, and it's really getting to be on its last leg. <laughs> I took the existing schematic for the jig, dropped it into a via grid PCB, took me 20 minutes to lay it out, and a couple hours later, I had a completely finished PCB ready to get parts populated on the Lumen and go onto the line. Honestly feels like a superpower. <laughs> this is not a simple board. It's effectively a feeder PCB. Literally the PCB in this jig is the feeder that we ship thousands of. I was able to route and implement a slightly modified version of our feeder on this PCB in 20 minutes. And I was even able to drill holes with the laser too. This is a barrel jack that mounts in through the back side of the board. That's insane. Come on, that's so cool. So here's where we're at folks. With Viagrid, these new type of lasers that are entering the market, a lumen PMP, a paste extruder head, and a reflow oven, you can go from design to functional working board in 90 minutes. And no jumper wires, nothing jank. This is a true two layer PCB with factory vias and two sides. I feel like we are on the brink of a whole new wave of hardware prototyping where every engineering company has a workbench dedicated to quickly spinning up PCB prototypes in 90 minutes, just like every company now has a workbench with a whole bunch of 3D printers on it. And just like with 3D printers, you have to make some design concessions in order to get it to work. You have to consider overhangs, you have to consider layer lines. And this goes for any manufacturing process. You need to consider the DFM. You have to consider how it gets made. And this is no different, except the only concession is really the size of the board and where the vias are. Aside from that, you have true design freedom. So what's next? I've taken everything I've done here and put it up in a GitHub repository. The Lightroom project file, the actual ViaGrid PCB design file itself, uh, design rules, KiCad template PCB, everything you need to do this. The design for the alignment jig is there too if you'd like to print one yourself. I also have a handful of these boards left from my first order, so if you'd like to help design and build this with me, there's a link in the description where you can reach out and I'll just send you some for free. But you have to want to do this. I want to send these to people who are going to help collaborate on this idea. I strongly believe this is something that is going to drastically reduce the iteration time for PCB design and I want to help. I want feedback on this. If you try this out yourself, please let me know how it works for you. I want to make this better and a useful standard tool for everybody. I'm actually already working with a small group of people trying to figure out how this design can work across different manufacturing techniques using lasers or acid etching or CNC. Also, I'm lukewarm on the name. It's just something I picked randomly. If you have a better name for this, please drop it in the comments. <laughs> I thought the layout of the vias kind of looks like the layout of the holes on a graham cracker and like a graham cracker and breadboard. They're both kind of like carb food things. <laughs> so maybe there's something there. I don't know. I don't like naming stuff. If you have ideas for a cool name for this standard, please drop them in the comments. I'm gonna be using this standard for a bunch of projects in the future and continuing to develop it. So make sure you get subscribed so you catch future videos I make about this and more updates about how the standard is going to develop. And also don't forget to check out the Lumen PMP. If you need to make PCBs, it is a really useful tool. There's a link in the description. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.